What's going on everyone? It's Jamie here from Shopify Masterclass and today we're doing an overview of the Shopify dashboard and how you can navigate the back end here so you can get the most of your Shopify store. So make sure you stay to the end of the video as we're doing a general overview here. Before we dive into it, I just want to thank our sponsor ProfitCalc, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. There's a link in the description below to test drive everything for yourself with a 15 day free trial. I'm going to show a quick video detailing their full feature set. Discover Profit Calc, the affordable and easy to set up Shopify app that crunches your numbers in just one click. It automatically syncs with all your accounts and expenses to calculate your profit, displaying everything in an easy to read dashboard so you understand your business in real time. Start for free on the Shopify app store today. All right, so let's do an overview of the Shopify dashboard. So this is the back end. This is our test store, testing develop store, a little generic here. But this home section is where you can get an overall view of what's happening on your store. So on the right hand side, you're going to have things like total sales, the breakdown by channel, top products and activity. So the things you have done on the back end, you can also sort by date and the channel here. This is one section of the home page. The middle section is going to be notifications on what's happening in your store. There's going to be suggestions here on what you can do. You can see for this one, you can add a GST, HST number. So it's recommending that you go to the tax settings to set that up. There's a tab to get your store ready for search engines. You can learn more about tracking returns, but how do you Shopify inbox, how to find photos. And so these notification cards here are going to depend on your Shopify store. It's going to be relevant to what you need to set up and Shopify is going to suggest things there. So this is the middle part of the back end on the home section. The next thing you want to pay attention to is the top search bar. This is going to allow you to find almost anything. You can search for order numbers. You can search for customers. You can search for Shopify apps that you have installed. You can search for products. This is going to be your main tab here if you want to find anything quickly and you know what you're looking for. So on the left hand side is going to be your navigation. This is the menu to the Shopify dashboard in the Shopify backend. We separated into some overall categories followed by sales channels and then apps. So let's go through these one by one just to give you an idea of how they look, how they feel and how you can navigate them. So the first one is going to be orders. So these are going to list all the orders that take place in your store. As we can see in this test store here, there's going to be one order, but typically you'll see quite a few orders here as your Shopify store starts to grow. So you can fill through these. You can search at the top here, but you can also search here for the specific order number, such as 1004, and it's going to load that order number there. You also have the sorting ability on top to filter by unfulfilled, unpaid, open or closed orders. And that's going to be based on the fulfillment status and the payment status as well. So you also get the additional ability to filter here, except there are no more than one orders. And you can filter at the top here by payment status, fulfillment status. You can additionally customize some of the columns. Maybe you don't want to see all these here, so you can use that there. And there's the sort here. You can also save the sort or the filter too for quick access later. You can also have the ability to export your orders if you want to bring it into an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file for Google Sheets so you can get some more drilled down information there. There's also the manual ability to create an order. You can search for your products, add that in, and then capture payment maybe outside of Shopify. So overall in a nutshell, that's the order section. So these are going to be your orders that fully took place. The subcategories are going to be your draft orders. So ones that were created but were never actually fulfilled or completed. And then there's the abandoned checkouts. So Shopify will display some information on customers that added things to their cart but didn't complete it. So you can follow up with an email. So that is the order section there. And if we want to click down a little further, it's going to give you information on each order. So there's going to be a section on the paid, how much was paid, what the taxes were, what the shipping costs or the, that if relevant. The right hand side is going to include customer information, such as contact, shipping address and billing address. They're also concluding or including a fraud analysis based on quite a few factors to give you some assurance that this order is okay. Sometimes if it's high fraud, you can choose just to cancel it right away as based on Shopify's data that customer may be suspicious. You can also edit the order by clicking that up here. You can refund it and there are more actions to duplicate archive. If you have several Shopify apps installed, there are typically some more customization options here. The timeline is super useful as well. It's going to give you a step-by-step -step on what happened with this order. So you can kind of go back in history if you ever want to know the edits that were made along the way. And it's going to be done by different members of your team or different applications as well. You can also leave comments just to give you an idea of what was happening. So that is the order section there. The next one we'll take a look at is products. So there are quite a few tabs here. Without making this video too long, let's just do a general overview. So you can filter by active, draft, and archived. You can also export or import products in bulk here. So if you want to look into a product, you simply click on the underlined product name, and it's going to dive into some details about it. You can see the title, the description, along with the pricing. So you can choose the charts, taxes, your cost per item. So it's going to be your cost of goods sold, as well as inventory details, such as the SKU and the barcode, along with a location name and the shipping information, as well 
labels which shipping zone it belongs to. You can also set the status and add it to different collections or vendors, which are help gonna filter your products. There's also the inventory tab so you can get information on how many are available. There's collections so you can sort your products into collections, making it easier for customers to find and to sort them and to lead to different relevant product categories. There's gift cards so you can add gift cards as a product which customers can purchase. There's also price lists so you can personalize wholesale buying with price lists here. So overall, that's mainly the product section. If you want us to dive into any more detail in any of these, just let us know in the comments as well. The customers tab is gonna be everything customer related in a single place. So when you've added customers, you'll be able to update their details, get a summary of their order history, create segments to send personalized communications that drive more sales and more. Now this testing store doesn't have any customers here, but as you start to build up a database, you can see their information and get an overall understanding of your customer base. Next, we'll go over the analytics section. This one is quite important. As your store starts to progress, is you're gonna wanna get a general overview of some more detailed analytics. So you get some really good summary here. So you'll see overall sessions, return customer rate, average order value, conversion rate, total sales, total orders, quite a bit of few detailed pieces here. You're also getting some traffic analysis with sales by social source, sessions, by traffic source, as well as top product units sold. To give you an overall view of how your store is doing, especially as you start to build up quite a few orders, it's hard to know exactly. So this analytics section is really good for that. There is the report section as well. So you can dive into different reports for your Shopify store. You can see sales over time, sales by product, sessions over time. And it's really gonna depend what you're looking for. You can also search for reports if you're not really sure which one you're looking for but you also get the ability to create custom reports as well. The live view isn't something that's too important. So we're just gonna show you who's live on your website ads once by location, sessions, and visitors right now. This one can be a little addicting to watch if you're starting to generate some sales as you can watch it as it's happening. The marketing tab is gonna give you assistance in creating different marketing campaigns as well as some overall results. So you go to the current campaign tab, you get the opportunity to select different ones. So you're gonna ad campaigns, email campaigns, social posts, and SMS. So this integrates with different ad platforms, so that can be kind of useful, and it encourages you to use Shopify email, where you get 10,000 free emails per month, which is quite a lot. So it makes it easy to create some post campaigns, audience ad builders, making it easier to set up those ad campaigns. If you do want some customization, you should probably learn how to navigate the dashboard yourself, but this can make things a little quicker, especially as you're starting out. So the discount tabs is gonna let you create discounts and promotions. So this is gonna be where you create your coupon codes. So we can say buy X, get Y, free shipping discount, amount off order, or amount off product. If you wanna create one, you're just gonna click in, name the discount code. You kinda wanna make it something that's easy to spell and write out. Then you can generate a coupon code, select if it's percentage or fixed, see which collections it applies to, the minimum amount, customer eligibility. You can limit it to one customer or the number of times a code can be used as well as set the active dates in which it's online. So let's dive into the online source section. So it's gonna be the front end of your store here on how it's shown to customers. Once you click on online store, you're gonna open up into a few sections. The first one you'll probably spend a long time in is the theme section. So it's gonna be where you host your themes for your Shopify store, where you can add them here by visiting the theme store, or sorry, add custom themes with a zip file. If you're not using the theme store, you get the ability to edit your code, the languages, also customize your theme. So by clicking this customize button, it's gonna bring you to the customization dashboard for your specific theme. From here is where you can make the edits to the homepage that you desire. You can make product page edits. And these are gonna apply generally overall to everything in your store. So keep that in mind, it's not just for a specific product, but you can customize the layout. For example, here with this theme, you can customize the layout of the homepage customize which products are shown. You can add new widgets, new theme sections, new videos, anything that the theme allows here to add further customizability. You also get a nice speed score, so how fast your page is loading. And you can see if it's quite slow, then there's something you probably want to address as it's loading slowly for a lot of your customers. Under online store, there are also your blog posts. So here you can manage blog posts, create blog posts. So these will help boost your SEO and bring customers to your website. It's often recommended to start a blog for your Shopify store. So you're getting your message out there, you're being discovered on SEO. And you probably write posts around your brand, your products. For example, we looked at the site A Brick a few videos ago. And the Brick writes a lot of posts such as five couch trends for the summer or outdoor patio trends. And in there, they'll list their products that are relevant. Under online store, there are also pages. So these can be customizable pages that aren't your product pages or blog posts. For example, a lot of people use Contact Us. They might have an FAQ page or a bodas page, where they include information that is 
relevant to their store, they could add it to the navigation menu so customers can also discover that as well. Navigation, this is gonna be your menus, so your sidebar menu or your top menu or your mega menu, depending on your store. But here you can customize the order in which items you want there as well. And if you have a theme that supports filters, you can add those in. The current theme that is added in the store doesn't have that, but that's just something to note. So these menus here, you could say this menu item is about us, so it's gonna appear about us on the page and you can then add the link and it's gonna show you some pages to add as well. And all you have to do is hit that add item and it's very easy to customize your navigation for your customers. Lastly, there's gonna be preferences here on the online store section. So it's when you customize things such as your title and meta description. So how it's gonna show up on Google when someone searches for your store, your Google Analytics code, your social sharing image, customer privacy, Facebook pixel, as well as if you want to restrict store access if you're just starting out. So these two are things that you want to set up right away is you want to be collecting customer data or information through these two sections here because these will allow you to build better ads as well as track how well your ad performance is doing. Next is the app section here and it's going to show you the apps you have installed and how you can access your Shopify apps that you have available. Lastly here is the settings section. This is broken down into quite a few things. I'm not going to go into detail just for everything here as I believe it's quite self-explanatory in these sections. So you can see store details, your address, your time zone, the Shopify plan you're on, how it's billed, users, payments, so checkout and accounts. Maybe you can customize the checkout experience a little bit so you can upload a logo, change the colors, fonts, and more. So I'll set customer settings and what information you want to collect on the checkout. So shipping and delivery is where you're going to set up your shipping costs, how much it's going to cost customers to pay for shipping, as well as the different shipping labels you're going to integrate with. There's also taxes and duties, which is very important to set up. You're ensuring that you're collecting taxes because you will be responsible to pay them, although this is going to depend on your country and the tax laws associated with it. But you don't want to ignore taxes as that bill can be quite large. So you want to make sure you're collecting taxes. There's also gift cards, apps and sales channels, your domain citing name, so you can connect an existing domain or to buy a domain through Shopify. There's also notifications, what you want to receive. So overall, quite a few settings here. So hopefully that's a good general overview of that section. This concludes the Shopify dashboard tutorial and how to navigate Shopify. We went through quite a few sections here. I hope this video wasn't too long. I hope you gained some useful information especially if you're just starting out. Before I end this video, I just want to say if you enjoyed it, smash that like button and that subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I want to mention our sponsor, ProfitCalc again, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. It comes with a free 15-day trial, so make sure you check out that link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in our next video.